Back to the morning edition at 630 right now on this first alert weather day. An atmospheric river is now drenching the waterlogged Bay Area. Many of you are probably in the dark right now. You've seen down trees or perhaps your neighborhood is already dealing with some major flooding or scenes like this out of Santa Cruz County. Part of Main Street at Glen Haven Road in Soquel is flooded. Fire crews say a culvert collapsed where the Bates River runs. Hundreds of homes are near that scene, which prompted the road to be shut down. They say the road is no longer passable because of life safety hazards. Governor Newsom has declared a state of emergency in more than two dozen counties, including San Francisco, San Mateo, Santa Clara, Santa Cruz, and Napa. And we have live team coverage on this first alert weather day. Justin Andrews is in Santa Cruz County, where evacuation orders are in effect due to flooding. And Gianna Franco is monitoring road conditions as we're seeing accidents and closures. But first, we're getting to first alert meteorologist Jessica Birch and tracking where this storm is right now. Jessica. All right, let's take this first alert forecast it is a very active day already and I mean in these overnight hours I even woke up to some really gusty conditions along the peninsula and heavy downpour too all of us did and this is very devastating very tragic to some people who live in those low-lying intersections where flooding is more likely to happen mind you we're all under a flood watch until Sunday issued by the National Weather Service and taking a look at the first alert Doppler this morning even though the rain is starting to ramp down we still have plenty more where that came from these atmospheric rivers have plenty of moisture suspended up in the atmosphere and this is what we're dealing with this morning. Those showers are starting to break apart and track to the south, but we are still dealing with some gusty conditions. A wind advisory actually is issued until four o'clock this afternoon due to this major system sweeping in from the Pacific. And just to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like on our water vapor imagery, we are still dealing with plenty of moisture just in those mid latitude regions out in the tropics as that sweeps its way into the California coastline. Today is day one of these atmospheric rivers, but we are going to be seeing plenty more where that came from and this weekend alone we could see close to over an inch of rain expected just near Calistoga and Healdsburg. The more south we go though, we're still seeing plenty even down into the Santa Cruz Mountains. Lots of rain and lots of moisture all throughout California. This is also impacting the Sierra Tahoe area too, where they're dealing with a winter storm warning until Sunday. This is not the weekend to be heading out to the Sierra Tahoe area. I hate it when it happens on a weekend. Of course, this is an inconvenience for many of us. And to add to that too, it's very dangerous for many of us. We're going to talk about the impacts for our local areas coming up in just a bit and how much longer we can see this rain really last. But for now, over to you, Gianna. Yeah, you're right, Jess. This is not a getaway Friday for anyone traveling. There are so many restrictions on parts of 80 as well as 50. It's a get yourself at home and stay there kind of day. So and if you can, that's probably a good idea if you can work from home because the roadways are pretty slick still out there this morning, and especially along 580 as we've got a pretty big hot spot here. And as we see more cars on the roadway, it's a problem. If you're headed westbound 580 through Oakland, all lanes still completely shut down between MacArthur and Fruitvale. This traffic alert has been issued for at least over an hour now. This is due to flooding, not safe for commuters to travel through there. And we have CHP live coming up in just a bit. We'll try to get an update on this eastbound 580. That left lane is blocked as well. So heads up there in that same area. 880, though, you can use that as an alternate. That's actually moving OK through this area, but you can see the surfaces are very slick, indicating uh, still some wet roadways out there. Things need to kind of dry out through there, and we've got a lot of crashes into the traffic center. So an overturned vehicle reported 101 northbound at Coyote Creek Golf Drive. That will affect your ride if you're headed northbound 101 out of Morgan Hill this morning, maybe into South San Jose. And heads up, if you typically take Niles Canyon for your morning commute, 84, completely shut down both directions due to flooding and mud in the roadway. That's between 238 Mission Boulevard to Main Street. I know a lot of commuters use that area to commute from Sonol over uh, towards Union City or Fremont. So definitely pack your patience this morning to take an alternate North 680 Koopman Road. There's a crash clearing in lanes. Uh, the good news is 80 looks pretty good. Highway 4 and 101 uh, so far out of San Jose moving along pretty nicely. Amanda. Well, to Santa Cruz County. Now, you may remember this dramatic video from Felton Grove back in January. You can see how flooded it is when the swollen San Lorenzo River surged into a neighborhood, leaving homes and roads just completely underwater. So crews made rescues on rafts and canoes, and those high water levels left the community struggling to just be able to recover. The cleanup for some folks since then has only just wrapped up. Justin Andrews is live near Fountain this morning where the San Lorenzo River is forecasted to crest into major flood stage this morning. 
that's only a couple feet than what we saw lower than what we saw in January. And Justin, as the sun is starting to come up, we're being able to see a little bit more. So just describe to us what's happening in that neighborhood you're in. Yeah, we're in that same neighborhood uh, that the video that you showed before you tossed to me that we were back in January. We're on Park Avenue in Felton, and you can see right now the ponding that is really, it's not even ponding, it's flooding here on Park Avenue. In fact, it's been receding since we've been out here for the last two hours at this point. This is drastically receded because the water levels were right at the headlights of that white SUV down the road here. And in fact, that stop sign, yeah, the water was much closer to the bottom of it. So we've noticed the waters have receded, but it's currently raining. As you can see, the puddles uh, hitting the uh, the ponding there on the road here. By now, we know a lot of people know it's routine who live in this area. They've already began moving their belongings to higher ground as they really just anticipate the San Lorenzo River possibly jumping its banks yet again because it already has this morning. Look at this new video we got from overnight, though, where sheriff's deputies were going door to door, alerting people to get out. They're under those evacuation orders right now. Even even though they live in this flood prone area, it's still not easy for them. Some homeowners tell us they plan on riding out this storm, even though their homes were damaged the last time we saw some of these rains. There are still mounds of mud in their neighborhoods, and there are others, though, preparing by tarping, boarding, and even sandbagging. We have everything kind of uh, raised. We have a storage mezzanine and try to keep everything off the ground as high as we can. This wide, 20 feet high of mud from way back here to way up here. This is uh, January 8th or 9th, and this is a week later. Soccer. And at this point, it seems like it's a waiting game. Obviously, the water has drastically gone down since we've been out here, but we also know the San Lorenzo River is a relatively small river so we can see that it can rise quickly and also recede quickly so with this water falling right now with the rainfall we could possibly see more flooding as we move into the next several hours and possibly days because it doesn't seem like this rain is letting up anytime soon i'll send it back to you yeah justin i mean it just keeps on coming down all morning long very concerned for those neighbors there justin thanks so much well the following schools in santa cruz county will be closed today because of the weather conditions and evacuation orders so it's Ann soldo elementary school pajaro middle school watsonville high school renaissance high school and watsonville infant center also in the south bay rivers and creeks are rising all all of this is happening and it's an extra concern for people who are unhoused, especially those living around waterways that are likely to flood. San Jose Mayor Matt Mahan went out with police yesterday to personally warn people living in tents around Coyote Creek. Police also used a new PA system on a van to relay the message. It can be heard up to a mile. Uh, during the, uh, the last storms in January, we got a great deal of community feedback about this system. People calling us, coming out of their homes, wondering if they should be evacuated. So we know the system works. We know we were able to reach. People with nowhere else to go are welcome at the Seven Trees Community Center. The shelter is open 24 hours. Pets are allowed and no reservation is needed. Well, up in the North Bay, this storm is causing major flooding on roadways. It even knocked down trees, and it's not making anything easy for commuters out on the roadways. We've been monitoring some issues and closures up in the North Bay, and we could show you that on a map here. Uh, and unfortunately, it's causing some slow go conditions on parts of 121 and Highway 29. 29 has since opened up. 121 Arnold Drive, though, still a bit of an issue. Joss Moran has been up in the North Bay throughout the morning, monitoring trees down in roadways, affecting roadways residents as well as commuters, even some flooding. Well, the North Bay is one of the areas getting hit hard by this recent storm. We're outside of a home here in San Anselmo. You can see this huge tree fell to its side, landed on this home, and you can just see the significant damage to the roof here. We don't know if anyone was home at the time, but the fire department was here around 8 p.m. The North Bay has seen damage. They've seen flooding as well. Here's video of other downed trees in the North Bay. This one here blocking both lanes of Sullivan Road in Grayton. And we've been talking about the dangers with flooding. This video shows cars crossing a flooded area along Frey Road in Grayton as well. Try to avoid driving through flooded areas because you don't know how deep the water could be. Something else we may not often think about is just how businesses are being affected by the rain as well. You're about to hear from someone who works at a restaurant uh, in Santa Rosa. His name is Ozzy Arreguin. He talks a little bit about the business that they are losing because of the rain. The umbrellas fell down, so I'm trying to think of ways we can 
maybe hide them somewhere else during the day because people aren't eating here anyways, but we can't have them in the doorway, so we're basically inventing the wheel as we go, I guess. Well, the restaurant Ozzy Works that had to close early because of the rain, people not showing up, understandably so, with these dangerous conditions out on the roadways and just with that heavy rain that a lot of us saw. Again, this is very scary situations. You're seeing things, scenes like these across the Bay Area. We showed the flooding, other down trees as well. When you are driving on the roadways, it's not raining right now in the North Bay, right? Get, we're in San Anselmo, um, but those roadways are still very wet. Just driving on the highway this morning, we saw some flooded areas that can catch you off guard. So again, just be extra aware and careful out on the roads. And a live look now at current PG&E outage map. As of now, nearly 5,300 Bay Area customers are in the dark, the majority of which appear to be in the South Bay and the Peninsula. You can see all those green and yellow areas with some orange squares representing up to 5,000 customers without power. At last check, PG&E says they've got extra resources dedicated to helping out and bringing your power back on during this storm. Government officials and Bay Area organizations are taking to Twitter, posting some additional resources for our unhoused neighbors affected by the storm. So it looks like Santa Cruz County is opening up another overnight shelter. This one's located at the fairgrounds over in Watsonville. Red Cross Northern California updated their list of shelters in Merced County and another shelter in Hollister. The San Francisco Department of Homelessness posted their list of shelters available here in the city. Gianna. Well, safety, of course, is top of mind today for many Bay Area commuters getting ready to make their way to work or even school this morning. And road conditions, a concern for a lot of people. So we're joined right now by Officer Dan Jackowitz with the CHP. Good morning and thanks for being here. Can you tell us generally, you know, how are things been looking out on the roadways? I always tell people when I do our traffic reports on days like this, if you can work from home, it's a good day to do it. I've seen less volume today. Are you seeing the same? Uh, thank you. Good morning, Gianna. It's good to be with you again. And I, I, I agree with you. You know, if you don't need to be out there right now, we definitely uh, would like you to stay home and work remotely if you can. Um, but we understand that, you know, everyone has a, a busy schedule and needs to go places. We just want you to do it safely. We want you to slow down because most crashes occur regardless of the weather uh, when people are driving too fast. But when this rain sets in, it, it brings a lot of oils up uh, and then obviously creates a lot of flooding and to our roadways and we have learned from previous uh, incidents dating back to January um, where, where cars are being swept away. It really only takes about two feet of water that's moving fast to sweep a, a vehicle away and only about six inches of water to sweep an adult away uh, off their feet. So we really want people um, to not go into the water. It's, it's unclear what's down there. The, 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 there. There could be anything lurking in the deep, right? So just uh, stay out of it. And we are still seeing that closure on 580 near High Street. There's about three feet of water in the number one lane eastbound. And Caltrans is working very diligently to try to get that cleared up, um, whether it's a pump issue uh, or a block drain. We're not, I'm not sure at this point, but hopefully that will be reopened soon. Yeah, 580 too. That is a freeway a lot of people use for the morning commute through Oakland. So I've been recommending 880, which is moving along pretty well. You mentioned vehicles in flooded water. So, you know, as Californians, this, well, with the exception of this year, we don't deal a lot with driving in inclement weather. So when you do come in a situation where you feel your vehicle hydroplane or you start of start losing control, what do you do? So the biggest thing is you don't want to overreact to the situation. Uh, you first want to check your vehicle, your tires, before you head out there to make sure you have enough tire tread. But if your tire tread fills up with water, and uh, that's usually when you see hydroplaning occur. So don't slam on the brakes or apply them aggressively. Uh, ease off the brake, apply it uh, steadily to the point of lockup, but don't lock them up. And then ease off so your tires can regain traction with the surface of the roadway. You want to keep them rotating because um, that will prevent the, the lock wheel skid. And don't do any sudden turning movements left or right with your steering wheel. If you can maintain a direct course uh, of travel, a straight course, that's best because you don't know necessarily who's to the left or to the right. Or there may be standing water, which usually happens on the sides of the road or in the slow lane or closer to the fast lane in, in the center median. So try to stay in the center away from that uh, area where there's possibly flooding. That's very, very good information there. Also, a lot of vehicles merge on and off the freeway in those right lanes where that flooding is. It can get very confusing. We really appreciate the information and you taking the time out on a very busy day to bring this.